today's drywall video is going to pay $350 and take about three to four hours to complete. Materials are $10, gas to get there is probably two gallons. Very easy job, it's two small patches and we're adding a bead, a little bit of a repair. Extremely easy, that's gonna put us about 80 to 90 an hour somewhere in that ballpark. Get it through your head, money isn't real it's a made-up concept right how much money do you make whether it's hourly or salary I don't care to talk about hourly I just put it that way to kind of uh, make it have make it make more sense for you guys but again so this one I'm making 80 and 90 an hour how many of you can say you do that and I do this full time I do this 40 plus hours every single week I make 80 to a hundred dollars an hour full time how many of you can say that change your mindset how money works it's just a made up concept it's not real you can have as much money in your hand as you think you can have right break through that barrier and achieve it it's that easy let's get into this drywall it's gonna be very cool um, and we'll go from there with it. I'll see you next video. Please subscribe, please like, even leave a comment about something you learned, want to learn, or something you think I could improve on. Thanks. This is that corner bead I was referring to. This bead has been just beat up really bad. Normally if it's just one of these little dungs, I can, I can remud it and make it right, but this bead has just been destroyed. So I'm going to just cut it out and replace it. I also have a small ceiling repair in here. And then I have um, some repairs upstairs. I'm not going to show you those today. I'm just going to show you these two repairs and we'll go from there. When cutting bead, I use this oscillator tool. It's, it has a blade on it that kind of wiggles back and forth really fast. And it cuts through pretty well. I also use it to kind of uh, sure up um, drywall and things like that but it does a really nice job uh, cutting through bead and it leaves a really clean line i did cut the bottom side of it um, i just it didn't show up on the camera so i just didn't show you guys here so once we've made a clean line through the bead we take our pry bars and we just pry it off On new drywall, when you anticipate using bullnose bead, you hang the drywall like this. See how there's, um, it's not met up. So you want to leave that small gap in there um, to accept the bullnose. If you were doing square bead, you would hang that drywall just a little different. With the ceiling patch now, I'm going to cut a bit of drywall back to expose some of the 2x4 so I don't have to add as much backing so I have something for the new piece of drywall to screw to.
At this angle, you can kind of see the 2x4 that I exposed by using that oscillator tool. Now I'm going to add back. In this case, it is just a piece of, um, I think that's baseboard I'm using. I just have extra of it. So anyway, I'm just going to screw that to there, and then I'm going to screw some on the other side. As you can see, there is now a piece of wood on every side of this repair. So when I put the new piece of drywall up there, I have something to screw to on every side. This will help um, prevent it from cracking. Now if you notice the hole isn't perfectly square, I really just don't care. I'm going to get the rough estimate of the hole where I take the smallest measurement and I just cut it to that size. So the square I add is going to be just a little bit smaller than the actual hole, but that is totally okay. You see me made kind of a few adjustment cuts here, um, and that's okay, you know, it's not going to fit perfect, um, it's not a perfect square, I'm just basically trying to get it inside of that hole so I can screw it into place. Alright, we have the piece of drywall up, now we're just going to screw two or three screws on either side uh, of the square and that's just going to secure it in place. Once you have all the screws up there you just kind of want to tap the drywall and make sure there's no loose areas because those would need to be attended to. This is our piece up close. Do you see the large gaps, how it's not fitting perfect? 
It doesn't matter. I don't care. It just doesn't matter. To get that piece to fit perfectly up there would have taken an hour to figure it out. And it just doesn't matter, though, because we're going to pre-fill. Next, we're going to prep for pre-fill. See this? Those kind of rough edges? I'm going to take my knife and cut a small little triangle out of um, those areas so we can kind of clean up all of those roughness because we want it nice and smooth there. It's important when doing a multi-patch uh, repair that you keep every patch on the same step. So that other patch I'm ready for pre-fill now, so here I need to get the bead on so I can pre-fill the bead. When you splice in a piece of bullnose like this, it's important that you have to float it to the correct height of the original piece because you want it to be a flawless finish. So you want to have, when you screw it on, you want to make sure that it uh, sticks out a little bit and matches to the right one, just like that. The piece of bull nose, generally, when you're replacing it that you took off, it leaves kind of a canal for you. So the new piece um, fits kind of right in there, and you don't really have to do too much thinking about it. Um, where compared to new drywall, you have to get out your level and make sure um, it's nice and straight. But this is um, just kind of fits in the canal. We want to screw it tight and uh, make sure there's no heavy lumps. Once our bead has put, put on, we're going to do the prep for pre-fill, just like we did that other patch. So I'm just taking any loose stuff off, and then I'll take my blade and clean up any funny edges. Um, again, we want to get everything on the exact same step, so then when we go on to the muddy side of things, everything is on the same step.
Now the same thing here, we're going to take out a small triangle and again cut off any loose or bumps or just messed up pieces of drywall so we have a smooth surface. We are now starting our pre-fill. Just get quite a bit of mud on the knife and we want to jam it in any of those cracks. Um, so we fill all those areas. And again, this is just as easy. This goes so much faster than cutting that piece of drywall perfectly because the mud is going to fill any of those gaps. And again, this is called pre-filling. It's important to note on pre-fill, see how tightly I'm wiping it. I'm not leaving any excess mud on the outside it's just I just want mud on the inside of those those spaces and gaps so we want to wipe it extremely tight uh, after we get it up in there Once pre-fill is completed, you don't need to let it dry at all. You can move right into tape coat. I use ultra thin mesh tape. And using mesh tape is extremely important with any potentially damaged drywall like a patch. If you get any air bubbles inside, the mesh tape will help um, let those air bubbles breathe so you don't get any um, air bubbles. Uh, if you use paper tape, uh, then you might get a bubble and then you'd have to tear it back down and kind of start over.
once you have all the tape there, it's best practice to kind of take a glob of mud and hit all four corners. That way those do corners don't peel up on you when you um, wipe your next layer on. So I call this my first finishing coat, or you could say your second coat of mud. So the first finishing coat, we're just covering the tape, and we're still gonna do plenty of layers on top of this, so you're still gonna see the tape. It's still gonna look bad, it's still gonna look ruffle, uh, ruffled and just kind of messy, but that's okay. So first I'm just kind of messily getting the material up there on the tape, and then first you wipe the edges after the material's up there. See, I'm getting a nice clean edge. Okay, and then I'll do the outside edge. And then we're gonna wipe the middle, and we're gonna wipe it basically down to the tape, so you're going to see the tape again. You're not gonna get it on the first try. Don't attempt to get it on the first try. We're just trying to slowly build up layers. All right, we're now going to start the same thing on this patch, the pre-fill and the taping and second finishing coat. Now with this particular bead, I was only able to tape the one side. The other side, if I would have taped it, um, would have stuck over where the bull nose was and we didn't want that. So I just ended up taping the one side. However, it is best practice to tape both sides bead. And I said it on the other patch, but the first coat, it's not going to look good. We're basically there just to slowly start building layers. It's not meant to look good, but you do need it semi-flat so you don't have to do any sanding because we don't want to do any sanding in between layers at all.
All right, I've let that dry and I'm moving on to the next layer for both patches. What I do now is I put my knife up to the bead and I'm checking how much fill I need. Here I'm scraping off a few areas that kind of mounded too high, but I'm just seeing how much fill. So I put that up to the uh, bead and the new drywall and I see how much light is inside of the middle of the night. I hope that makes sense. I, I've explained it really well in other videos, but basically that tells you how much more mud that you need to put on the certain area. With this patch, I'm using 20 minute quick set mud and I have mixed thousands of pans. So I just am kind of used to it. I don't mix it 100% all the way, so it's still a little dry in there. So sometimes when you see me put on uh, some mud, it still kind of looks dry and unmixed. And as I wipe the material on the wall, it kind of mixes itself. It makes the mud last a little longer for me. Anyway, so we're just kind of going on with the third layer of mud here. I wish the lighting was a little better in here, uh, but I'm putting the knife up to the area to figure out the fill. And on the um, that 
right there needs the most fill out of any of them. So I put the most mud there, but basically what I'm doing, um, and I've said it on the other patches, I'm just getting the material up on the wall, and then I wipe my edges, wipe both edges, see how I'm doing that? And then I wipe the center to kind of smooth everything out. That's the same exact technique you use on every single layer. Just get the material up on the wall, wipe the edges, and then smooth out the middle. I'm gonna let that dry about 15 minutes and this is an additional quick set layer that particular area there needed the most fill so that's where I kind of concentrate the most with the thicker of the mud but the exact same technique I get the material up on the wall I wipe the edges I wipe down the middle to smooth things out and you do that same technique on every layer even on pre-fill
When doing fill on bullnose or just any bead, before you add an additional layer, you just kind of want to clean that bead up because it tends to hold little chunks of mud and you don't want hardened chunks of mud in your fresh mud because then you'll get really ugly lines and it won't finish very well. So just take your knife or even a piece of sandpaper, which I don't do, but I just take my knife, but, but just clean up that bead so all the hard bits are off of it.
right, same thing. I let that dry 10 or 15 minutes. And I'm going on with my final coat. This is a finishing coat. It's a uh, mud called Topping. You can get it at Home Depot. Uh, it's just a nicer mud to sand on. It's a nicer mud. Uh, it takes to paint better. So I always finish every patch with topping coat um, and it just gives a flawless look.
Okay, same thing on this patch. I am done with all the quick set fill. So now I'm going to use my topping coat to do the final fill and just kind of get everything smooth and perfectly flat uh, so we can prep the area for texture. I let the topping coat dry, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. Now we're just doing a super light sand. You want to pay particular attention to the edges so you feather out everything because uh, you don't want to see that step from uh, paint to new drywall. You don't want to see that lip. So you want to make sure you sand the edges the most and then everything else you just kind of want to sand flat.
Okay, we're now adding the orange peel texture. Orange peel texture is, you just kind of have to get used to it. Do not buy those cans from the hardware store. The the spray cans, they're they're totally they're just junk. They're totally worthless. Buy the hopper. This hopper is like a hundred bucks, and you it'll last you forever. So there's a million settings: how much air pressure you do, how wet you do the, the mud. It'll all give a different look. So just takes practice. This mud like was the thickness of yogurt, maybe wet yogurt, um, and then I, I made it the setting pretty much as little mud as could come out of it, uh, this, the setting I did, because it was a very, very light texture. Um, but yeah, we're just spraying that on. I muted this particular uh, clip. The customer came in and started talking, and I, I just didn't want you to overhear him chatting. So this is kind of funny, I thought. I forgot my hawks at home, so I just kind of made hawks. Uh, just two pieces of flat wood, and then I put little handles on them. But it's the exact same technique. We're going to put a small layer of mud on those flat portions. We're going to smush them together to create little peaks, and then we'll wipe those peaks off.
Okay, we just finished that job. He added a tiny little something. Uh, so I, I just said 25 for that, so we're at 375. What I didn't show you in the video is the uh, uh, third area upstairs, a hole about this big, and then the other small area. I just didn't want to carry the camera up and down, uh, but I showed you two of the four areas. Again, this is $375. It took me four hours and 15 minutes to complete. We have less than $10 of material, two gallons of gas, so you work that math out, that's about 83 an hour. Four hours, 15 minutes. I'm right now headed to another job, it's for 300. It'll take me, I don't know, three or four hours complete. I do this full time, drywall. You can make this much money doing drywall patches, you can make this much money doing really anything. Break free, change your mindset how money works. Money isn't real. It's a made up concept and it holds you back. So change how you think about it and you can have as much money in your hands as you want. Literally, you can. Like this video, hit subscribe, but most importantly, soak in the information. Really listen to it. I can change your entire life and tell your friends. It's not about me, it's about you. You can change. We can change. We can do this. I can show you how. Don't be afraid. I'll see you next video.